joys of heaven. One desire alone have I, that the poor may suffer no more. That was Gandhiji's prayer. His heart was ever full of grief for our downtrodden. He knew that freedom would be but an empty shell if our many millions continued to be ill-housed and ill-fed. At the same time, Bapu was quick to realize the potential worth of our village crafts crops that are a part of our ancient heritage. And among these crops, spinning and weaving held pride of place. Time was when the song of the spinning wheel and the rhythm of the loom were joyfully heard in every Indian home. And the beautiful fabrics woven in those ancient days were highly prized by our people. Not only by our people, for many of those fine fabrics crossed the sea to win renown around the world, helping India become a prosperous nation. Then the tide turned against us. Foreign traders dumped on our shores their machine-made fabrics. These were not as lasting as our hand-spun cloth, but they were cheap. The inevitable happened. Unable to cope with foreign competition, our spinning wheels and looms lay neglected, and millions of our craftsmen were faced with starvation. The immensity of the tragedy was deeply felt by Gandhiji. He was convinced that in the revival of the spinning wheel lay the economic and moral regeneration of India. It could well be again the wheel of prosperity for our masses. Thus was born the Khadi movement, a symbol of India's fight for freedom. For the spinning wheel blends well with the pattern of our village economy because spinning is an answer to unemployment. It can be undertaken either as a full-time or seasonal occupation by the farmer and his family. The evolution of the charka is an intriguing story, a story that is symbolic of the villagers' advancement. Much thought and research have gone towards perfecting the different types of charka. Modified spinning wheel costs little and is one of the simplest instruments ever devised. And its simplicity itself to operate. And its needs too are simple. Firstly, cotton grown by our people. And from cotton to hand-woven cloth or khadi, every process is simple, for it's done by hand. First comes the ginning, eliminating seeds and foreign matter. Next, carding, either the old way or the new, to separate the cotton fibers. The fibers are made into slivers. 
Fine threads are then drawn out from the slivers for weaving. No powered machine can produce yarn of more than 150 counts. While the skilled hands of many a villager can spin thread up to 500 counts, thread that's far finer and stronger than any made mechanically. And it's a thread on which hangs the livelihood of more than a million of our craftsmen, who today earn a living in one form or another from the making of hand-woven fabrics. For besides offering a living to the growers and spinners of cotton, the charka provides employment to many others who help in its manufacture, like the blacksmith and the carpenter. Furthermore, the charka feeds the looms with supplies of yarn, thus giving weavers employment. Dyers, engravers of designs, and those who print them also benefit from the wheel. The making of these homespun fabrics is an ancient craft now happily revived, once again giving full scope to the creative talents of our craftsmen. And today, to make these beautiful fabrics better known, one rupee's worth of khadi is sold for only 13 annas. And who gets the 13 annas? All of it goes to the makers of khadi and to them alone. The three annas in every rupee, which a purchaser doesn't pay, are the overhead expenses incurred in stocking and selling khadi. And these three annas in every rupee are met by government subsidies. In 1954, the subsidy amounted to well over 5 million rupees. It's a part of our country's policy to popularize the use of homespun fabrics, thus fulfilling a pledge of the Indian Constitution, which records, in particular, the state shall endeavor to promote cottage industries on an individual or cooperative basis in rural areas. Thus, in our country, Khadi has become a symbol of equality for it is worn by peasant and president alike. Not only a symbol of equality, but also a symbol of distinctive craftsmanship, which is once again making our homespun materials popular. For Cardi combines elegance with utility, and the variety of homespuns produced can meet every requirement. Increased sales mean increased production which in turn will give us fabrics that are finer and more durable. Cardi comes ready-made too, in all shades, sizes and patterns, to suit every taste and pocket. For young or old, for use in the home or in society, Cardi is the answer. And if all of us were to patronize these fabrics to the full, it would give employment to another hundred million of our men, women and children. A hundred million saved from utter poverty through the increased sales of fabrics made by hand. In short, Khadi. And for them, Khadi is food. For Khadi is the symbol of the man in the village who is India's backbone. It was for him that Bapu rediscovered the spinning wheel, a simple wheel turned by the simple action of the hand. Many kinds of wheels have been moved by the hands of man. And through the centuries, the wheel has been closely associated in our country with human welfare. <laughs>